Okay, uh, from now we'd like to commence the online broadcast of Tokyo Contemporary Art Award 2019-2021 Exhibition Artist Talk. Uh, I'm uh, Funabashi from Tokyo Arts and Space. Uh, Tokyo Contemporary Art Award, abbreviated as TCAA, uh, started in 2018 by Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Tokyo Arts and Space uh, Contemporary Art Prize. It's for mid-career artists based in Japan, uh, and there are open call and recommendations for two winners selected. Uh, over uh, several years, um, there is continuous support for the artists to encourage career development on an international stage. This exhibition, uh, the winners of the first TCAA in 2019, Shitamichi Motoyuki and Kazama Sachiko. Uh, Museum of Contemporary Art, Tokyo is the venue. Today, uh, while showing preview of exhibition, uh, we will show we will invite the artists to talk about the exhibition and their works. Uh, we will also make an archive of the talk and uh, provide English dubbing afterwards. So without further delay, we'd like to ask uh, Shitamichi Motuki to start. Uh, Shitamichi will join by, via Zoom. Hello, Shitamichi. Hi. Hello. Uh, well, uh, can I just talk first and then, like, you know, switch to the, uh, you know, the video, so, like, you know, the uh, screenshots and so on. Is that right? So, please give me a shout. I will give you a shout anyway. And, uh, like, in any pauses, please give me a shout anyway. So, uh, I've never ever done things like this, so I don't know how to build up my talk and so on. Uh, but, uh, you may uh, wonder, like, in you know, why I am at the moment. Well, actually, I'm just doing it inside the car, you know. And, uh, well, now I've been doing a bit of research, a bit of traveling with the car, like, you know, staying, sleeping over in the car and so on. So that's why I am at the moment. And what you can see uh, behind me, maybe some people may be able to tell, uh, where I am, but uh, I'm in a in a car park of the uh, Ota City Art Library, and uh, yeah, I'd like to sort of give my presentation from here. And uh, up to here, I've already done the research in the uh, Yamagata and Akita. Try level best not to have like much in contact with uh, people, and I'm thinking about like in you know, skipping Kanto area. So, like, you know, in the middle of travel, and uh, excuse me, from inside a car. So, uh, yeah, talking about TCA exhibition, uh, we had lockdown, and uh, it wasn't open to the public, but, like, you know, finally, we'll be open with the condition of, like, you know, with a reservation. And it'll be open uh, 22nd of June, so, uh, like, you know, I'm hoping everyone to pop in. And uh, this, you know, the live streaming event, well, I suppose, like, you know, it'll be effective to some extent, but, like, you know, it'd be nice if I were, I could, like, I were to be able to sort of speak to you in front of you, but uh, anyway... Let me do it from here. So, uh, based on the videos, like in what had been shot yesterday, then like an I'll talk on top of it. And uh, can you hold on a sec? Uh, it's, it feels quite weird, like, you know, thinking that everybody can see this, you know, but anyway, uh, so like TC exhibition, like in you know, the space, you know, like, uh, because the, like, the people seeing this, they'll not be able to see, it, you know, in, in real, so uh, allow me to explain a little bit. So uh, I had the uh, opportunity to exhibit my Tori work under the uh, Mo Anyo in 2012, so since then, like, I have never done anything to do with uh, MOT, so I just wanted to s showcase uh, like uh, what I had been doing since 2012. So Tori is a series, right? And after that, well, you know, sort of like uh, next 10 years, nine years, like you know, what sort of stuff I had been doing. So that's something like I wanted to sort of show, showcase basically. And with a wall in, a, in my space, using light, I scattered and uh, loosely sort of like uh, connected those works and uh, like an expecting like expecting audiences to roam round going back and forward to see the work like and that's how I build up the space anyway let's start
So maybe start with the video. So uh, it's on the ground floor, and uh, like you know, as you're getting like you know, that this is what you get to see. So it's really spacious, actually, and uh, I try to level level best not to uh, put a wall. So, like you know, the the ones like in the on the right, right is Setouchi Museum. It's the archive. So this is the latest piece. So, so I moved to Naoshima like in about like in one year ago, and uh, together with the uh, Futakai Foundation, it's a uh, like you know long run project, and uh, like you know building relationship with the locals, and then um, the collecting the like a. Uh, you know, the object from local people to build up some sort of like a library ish sort of stuff. So I've done the first one year. So there are two more years to go. And uh, if you see their bookshelves, it seems a bit empty because, like, it's just only one year amount of archives, but like eventually it gets bigger and the space will be filled. And uh, so I brought everything from that archive and then rebuilt in this space. So basically, uh, so there's a Bisan Seto, there's area, like an uh, archipelago sort of ish. So like, you know, there's this uh, records or like uh, documents, like I'm trying to level this to uh, collect everything. And uh, on the tables or like, you know, the, on the wall, like, you know, the binders files. So uh, there's this uh, Tanaka Haruki, is the uh, local guy, 92 years old. And uh, he's been making uh, some sort of a scrapbook, like, you know, sort of an extract of the uh, newspaper for the last 40 years. And if you just wander around, then like, you know, oh, yeah, this one is okay, yeah. So can you go back? Yeah, yeah. So, like you can see in this way. So, like you know, you can see the uh, you know the file binders on the wall and the tables, and then the uh, this is like you know the uh, is the uh, basically scrapbook built or made by the uh, Tanaka Haruki. And uh, so, like in whatever the article to do with Naoshima, he's picking up like you know, maybe sad news or accident or like you know local kids or manage to, you know, get to a Koshien or something. If there's a name on it, then he just picking up everything, like you know, everything to do with Naoshima. And every day he's collecting. So this, his archive, this, like, you know, the archive. And uh, he donated this to us, and uh, I just mixed it with my last exhibition, and I had really amazing feedback. So there's this guy, like, you know, who was on the, uh, like, a uh, Shikok newspaper about, like, you know, 20 years ago, and he just looked into this archive and he managed to find it. So, like, you know, local guys are totally excited, and what is good about archive is that if you do it thoroughly, and, uh, you know, the one who's choo the, the one who is involved doesn't really choose what to be archived, so it's open to, like, anyone who wants to see it, so that's what is good about the archive. Thank you very much. So maybe we can just move on about this, or shall we go back to? Uh, let's go back to the uh, video. This. This is like a sort of new work. It's basically reassembling like an old works and then made it into uh, like a new work. Drawing the line is the title. Yeah, let's have a look. Sorry, it's really hard to see, but uh, so this is shape of border is the uh, series like in which I've done at the uh, IT Triennale where I was collecting the object, you know, from the borders from various locations. And the uh, S-House Museum run by Hanafsa, it's a small private museum in Okayama. 
and uh, I came up back then there, I came up with the idea of uh, collecting waters, and then slowly, slowly, this took into shape, and then I somehow sort of edited it in, in a different format. For example, this water, so the, the, the water from the Imjin River, you know, like uh, the river dividing the uh, North and South Korea, that's one of the uh, boundaries, right, or borders. Or, or the uh, strait in the uh, Istanbul, in Turkey, which is dividing Europe and Asia. So those, you know, the historical borders, and, uh, you know, basically like I'm collecting waters or sea waters or river waters from those borders. And, um, and if you moved on to this, you know, 14 years old world and the border, there's this another series. And... Uh, that this work is basically like uh, to put onto a news uh, to, uh, to a junior high school kids article into the newspaper and uh, i've done the workshop with the uh, korean kids and uh, for some of the kids you know who wrote brilliant you know the uh, text then like you know i instead of like you know, using their text i would give you my sort of little work so i just like uh, put the uh, river from the imaging river a uh, water from imaging river into like some sort of package and I gave it to them anyway let's move on <laughs> so I set the uh, like you know, my space quite like dark, like you know, using some sort of an odd shaped downlight, and hanging from the ceiling about like in three meters high. So uh, I'm trying to sort of like uh, create some sort of like a uh, island. In of light, and the reason is like the reason of using downlight is that uh, you know the MOT does have really high ceiling, and also my work is really small. So uh, I was trying level best no audience to be aware of like you know anything above certain heights in a space. So this one is the 14 years, years old world border. This is project, I would like sort of series. So I started in 2013. Yeah, you can just, yeah, move on, yeah. But anyway, so I started off from the IG Triennale and uh, it's a series, you know, and uh, uh, well, I don't know what to put it, but uh, how to put it? Uh, well, like an I managed to get the uh, like a two week slot of the uh, art class at the uh, junior high school, and uh, you know talking to or basically teaching second year junior high school kids. It's almost like I'm giving my workshop. So uh, I asked them to observe everyday life, and on top of it, I set a theme saying that can you find the border around yourself, and that was the first class, and on the next week. By the next week, um, expect, I expected them to write some, like, you know, the text on the borders. So the, the question I said, the question of the, uh, theme I said was quite vague, and uh, they wrote lots of, like, in various texts, and on the second session, at the end of the, the uh, workshop, I... Yeah, so there's a top, like, you know, there's a, like a, someone just approached me to sort of put those, like, you know, the uh, text written by the kids onto the uh, local newspaper about, like, you know, sort of a 10 series, basically. So that was the output, basically. Ah, so this one's really good. So the Guangzhou Biennial, like, and I was part of it in 2018 in Korea, and I also did this work. So, like, you know, I, I visited about, like, a three junior high school in Guangzhou, Korea, and... Uh, so the final output was that the their text. Yes, this one. So, so like you know, the one you can see on the 14, otherwise like and everything else is hungo, but uh, so the ones like in you know, high, uh, the circle, you know, with the red, that's the text written by the junior high, cook, junior high school kids. So the borders, you know, the, the, the borders, the conception of border or like understanding of the border by the junior high school kids somehow coexisting with the uh, everyday news so uh, the readers would wonder so the borders you know the, the story about the borders from the kids would get also would also get read by the normal news readers
So this is from the newspaper of that project, right? Yes. This is the one that I just mentioned, um, the one in Korea. So the kind of series published in the newspaper, um, the date of publishing was kind of fixed and it kind of um, randomly was put together with other different news stories. So this is in Japan, um, in Sanyo newspaper in Okayama. So you see in the newspaper a regional newspaper. So every time we ask, we kind of negotiate with them to ask if they can publish for free the, the students' um, writing. So on the side of the newspaper, um, it, like the pages of for society or politics is kind of a bit difficult. So then they usually put it in with the local news section. But in the case of Guangzhou, of course, um, they have the large art event and uh, they kind of uh, place importance on the, the freedom of uh, you know, speech. And so they, they gave the front page uh, to publish the students' writing. And so these kind of children's texts writing small thing is placed against you know these big news stories. Um, so in 2018, when this series was done in, in Guangzhou, it reached kind of its complete form. This is Hong Kong newspaper. This newspaper is called uh, Ming Pao, uh, and it's very uh, democratic uh, newspaper. But of course, right now, um, the editor has quit, and the paper has kind of changed, um, changed its focus. But at that time, you know, lots of different things were written. So in terms of Hong Kong, uh, the students uh, wrote text and that was included in the local newspapers. Another output from this project, um, of course, the newspaper uh, publishing, but I also produced a, a book. And this often happens in my practice, but this is kind of unusual book. Um, so this is um, for an exhibition, Hong Kong Tycoon Art Museum. Um, they wanted me to uh, produce a book and I asked to produce 300 copies without being sold and the idea that they pass from one person to another and, and kind of they are currently traveling around the world, these books. Um, of course, in, in amidst the pandemic, this has different meanings, but um, inside the books, there are these uh, kind of library card index index cards, and you see my name written, and below that, the, the next person who gets the book uh, writes their name. Uh, and the designer was Akiyama Shin, a uh, kind of art book designer, kind of very um, active uh, designer. Uh, do you have a, a close-up of the book? Okay, so you see. So actually, the the main part of the book actually opens out, and also the the back of the the index card has even more names written. You really see how many times it has passed. So let's go on to the next work, shall we? So what you're seeing here, this is kind of a glass work, uh, Okinawa glass, um, called Floating Monuments Project. This is uh, 2005 I started and uh, using, after typhoons that in Okinawa, the beaches, they have lots of bottles that collect. And there were really a, a lot that collect on the beach. Uh, and they come from Taiwan or China. Uh, this kind of white um, liquor from Korea. These kind of bottles uh, collect. And things that are not sold in Japan. So they kind of uh, travel by the ocean currents, of course. Uh, and I ask uh, local craftspersons in Okinawa, um, kind of discussing with them 
uh, to recreate, uh, to form new shapes of uh, bottles from that glass. So, of course, when you mix different glass um, from different countries, they tend to crack. So when they cool, their kind of rate of contraction is different. Um, so some contract, some don't. And so these kind of break, uh, crack suddenly. Um, and like a picture that we made one time, there was this crack right down the center. So these are kind of things that are made to, to break, to crack. But of course, some uh, are used differently. Some suddenly crack while being used or... Um, so every three or four years I go to Okinawa and uh, ask craftsperson and we kind of make make again, make new works I'm going every year to do this. Um, the next series actually uh, that appears, Tsunami Boulders, um, I made it at the same time as this Tsunami Boulders. So um, while filming, uh, like using a, a tripod, I collect glass from the beach. So this kind of, um, yeah. So the, the glass, so then you have lots of material that you haven't used or? Ah, oh, sorry, no, the glass hasn't broken yet at the moment. The glass on, on exhibition is, is not, uh, has not cracked at all. So they are the same period. So half of them already, they kind of have little cracks in them. So, so then if we can return to the, the video. So on the wall, so every time you kind of use a different glass collected from the beach, but uh, how much glass has been used in the kind of melting pot, we kind of it has a record of that. So this is a uh, monitors actually, uh, nine video screens. This is a tsunami boulders. If you could show them moving, uh, they're, they're moving right now. Oh, ah, okay, so they're moving, right. Uh, this is you yourself, right, appearing in the video. They look like photos, but actually they're, they're movies. So in the kind of top left-hand quarter, you have goats uh, moving slightly. Uh, like a uh, person is kind of walking and kind of plants are, are slowly shifting. So then kind of nine screen video looking like black and white photos are called uh, Tsunami Boulders. So this series, maybe everyone, many of you have seen before. Um, so 2019, uh, Venice Biennale, the Japan Pavilion, they were presented um, and kind of it's acknowledged from that time. But the Japan Pavilion, um, was, uh, Yasuro Taro, who does the music, and uh, Ishikura Toshiaki, um, and kind of architect Fuminori Nosaku, it was kind of a collaboration with them. So um, I didn't feel it was complete as a, a work of my own. So then, so then as a, a kind of independent series, I wanted to show. Um, so then I, it's this structure that I showed this time. So when it was showed at the uh, pavilion, it kind of with a balloon and with other elements and kind of existing together with these other things. Ah, yeah, the people have come into the shot. So even though it's black and white, the, the space, for example, uh, sounds kind of showing together, it's, it's possible to show the work together with uh, other elements. So in Ven Venice, you know, of course, this way of showing this is also a, a kind of genuine way that I would show the work, but um, here I showed in this way.
Right, so back to video. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, map of uh, tsunami boulders. And uh, Yes. Yeah, that's all right. So you can go back to the uh, video. And uh, just uh, before the Kazama space, there are two books, you know, sort of uh, wrapping the uh, stones, you know, and this is called uh, New Stone Tools. It's sort of series project sort of things. So, like, yeah, move on to the photos. And uh, so in 2016, I had a uh, like small scale, but the fast solo show at the Kurobe City Museum. And uh, Ikuji, there's a beach called Ikuji in Kurobe, and uh, it's like, you know, they do have like uh, these round shaped stones. And uh, the local people, they using these stones. So like you know, some, someone used those stones for the doorstoppers or putting on the roof or decorate or like you know, sort of creating wall out of it or like you know, using as a boundary stones. So like just the stones picked up from the beach, it's like everybody's using it. And uh, I was just shooting, shooting, shooting and then like you know, it turned out, output turned out to be uh, like enough for one book. So uh, the ones on the left is a big catalog and as a gift, a free gift, I put a stone from that beach so nowadays like if you buy a magazine or something like and this is free gift to it so a little bit like that like you know i put the uh, stone in it uh, and uh, yeah that's how I, that's a format and the ones on the right the small you know the catalog so it's, i got the uh, basically like a request to the exhibition in korea two years later and uh, so then like in what i thought was basically like i traveled started off from aichi prefecture where i was living back then and then fukuoka ikitsushima then busan in korea and uh, I was like, you know, I, I uh, rented a car and then traveled the uh, southern part of Busan and then drive up to the Seoul while like, you know, taking photos. And, uh, you know, the, the south of Korea, like, you know, you see basically like a uh, archipelago, basically, like it's a little bit like a Setonaikai. So lots of uh, islands, but strong waves. But uh, it's uh, same as Tsushima, like, you know, they do have strong uh, stone culture. So like in you know, piling up stones or so in Korea, uh, it's, you know, how they're using those stones, you know, it was really interesting. So I took photos on the way they're using and once I reached the Seoul, I edited the photos and then together with the Korean designer, uh, compiled into a book and then put a stone in it and I sold it, like, you know, sold everything and then come back. Like that was the... Uh, uh, format of the project so everybody's like you know enjoying like you know buying these catalogs oh yes i mean it's like a you know, normal price basically you know like in for the photo books basically so it's, it's not that expensive and everybody's sort of like you know, happy and after taking up you know this uh, after bringing back the uh, catalog like some people using the uh, stone or like and they just leave it as it is to archive or like you know some people like you know, feel a bit guilty about like instead you know, sort of uh, having a stone so uh, so i was thinking about that so uh, I only like you know source those stones from one beach. So if there's any uh, like you know uh, people who wants to bring the uh, stone back to a beach, then like you know I could have like you know, told them basically. So anyway, like moving back to the uh, video. Yeah, so uh, briefly, but uh, that's, that's the works like to be exhibited. 
in this space. So as you can see, you see the light hanging from the ceiling. So with the light, so the walk sort of stands out in a sort of semi-dark spaces, like islands, archipelago sort of idea. And then the audience gets like sucked into these spaces and then moves around. So, uh, so you know, the, the work's done after 20 work, you know, like about 10 years, you know, since the 2011-12. So I've been shooting like, you know, Tori in a way, like, you know, sort of, it, which is like in really sort of artistic in a way, like, you know, sort of, it's, it's Tsunami Boulder is one of those, but uh, I slowly, slowly, like, changed my attitude, like, you know, felt a bit strange. Or had like you know sort of a lesser motivation to shoot by myself and then make it into like you know present it as my as my work. So uh, like and I thought like you know maybe I, what I'm feeling at the moment is that maybe like sort of a popping into sort of a different different location like you know meeting different people doing collaboration like like life work and then slowly slowly building up something you know and that's not because uh, you know like I was being part of this, uh, you know, the local art festival, a rural art festival, but uh, for example, like in this, uh, you know, this 14 years old, the world and borders. So uh, around 2012, 2013, I was part of Water Alan Niigata Art Festival and I met uh, various people from like in various generations and asked them about the borders around their life. And then the uh, sort of, you know, someone just asked me, like, so if you ask into the junior high school kid, then why don't you just do a workshop at the junior high school? And then when I did the workshop to a junior high school, uh, the language coming out, or what they're thinking was really interesting. So then I was like, you know, sort of visiting different, different junior high school. And then I, the idea came out, like, you know, to put their text into the, uh, you know, newspaper. So uh, it's not, like, you know, this is my work, it's more like, you know, sort of I'm editing their text. And uh, to, so maybe like, you know, sort of I'm, I'm sort of manipulating or thinking a little bit more, like, you know, where would be the best place to put their text. So, uh, so maybe difficult to see what I'm doing from my work. So like, if you go through my spaces and then moving into Kazama's space, it's sheer creativity, or part of objects are there, whereas uh, my space is is kind of intangible, and you don't really like it to like come to understand like you know what to see, where to see. But uh, you know, building up the relationship with, with people in various places, and then like you know, continuing project in that way, becoming somehow like a life work. That's the approach I'm taking and uh, like in putting them into the uh, you know the exhibition spaces like instead of like in sort of facing wall to wall but like you know, without wall audience like in roams round and then they come to sort of like immerse themselves into the space that's what I was thinking I think so you said like in roaming round yes ah yes uh, I'm, uh, I'm using quite a lot of uh, marine charts in the space, uh, consciously, you know, and uh, Satoshi Archive, and also that uh, water series, like, you know, the one collecting waters, and uh, that 14 years old work. Oh, basically, like, all the works I'm using marine charts, and, like, you know, that is basically to map so marine chart is quite modern uh, product to you know, be able to sort of declare uh, the territory. So uh, so consciously I'm, I was using that, and also uh, like in the space, like you know try to sort of arrange the spaces for the audiences to roam around. And uh, I thought like you know, just using it as it is is not that interesting. So uh, can you like you know show the photos of that uh, water series? Yeah, this one. Yeah. So this work, this new work, you know, installation. So uh, this water chart without any land. 
And it's basically in the middle of uh, Sea of Japan. It's normally marine charts, like you, know, you get the land somewhere, but on this one, there's no land on it. And, uh, but, uh, like, you know, there's some shallow areas, and then, like, you know, people putting name on it. But uh, those, uh, you know, text informations, I uh, erase them off with a uh, box cutter. So like, you know, just scrape them off. So this marine chart is without any text information. I mean, like, you know, no one will notice, and it's okay, like, and people don't notice, but the, whilst using marine chart, I was sort of giving this negative sort of a manipulation to it. So that's it, really. And uh, so it's now it's about like you know half now, right? So uh, can I move on to my homepage to talk about my series? Is that right? So uh, can I screen share? Yes. Can you see? Yes. It's uh, kind of because I can't see who's in the audience, and since I'm kind of talking from my car in a car park, it's kind of never, never experienced uh, this kind of talk, but okay. So first of all, so the, from the top, um, Tsunami Boulder uh, series, which I explained just now. Um, the kind of Yayama Miyako Islands, um, the kind of uh, rocks that have been, boulders that have been moved by uh, tidal waves. So I have about 13 boulders that I've been, uh, that I've finished filming, and recording. Um, but of course, you know, because of the tide and the season, um, they change. So for over different times, I, I keep visiting the, the same boulders. Uh, so kind of four years, over four years, I've, uh, and then uh, of course, it became the Venice Biennale and started, wanted to continue, but then it became the pandemic. So I'm kind of continuing to go to film. So you have lots of footage. The kind of the same boulder depends on the, the year. You're kind of recording the same boulders, right? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear. So then you're continuing to research and the, the boulders you're going to kind of continue uh, filming, right? The, the, the changing um, the state. Well, rather than that, it's more like the, the daily changes of the, of the boulders. And not necessarily that my footage is better. Um, that, for example, someone is uh, fishing on the boulder. Maybe there's that kind of encounter that I would have. Um, so then, so then kind of once or twice a year, trying to go and, and film and capture these moments. So this series is kind of also connected with the Floating Monuments uh, series, the Okinawa Glass. Um, the, the glass, kind of making glass uh, work that I talked about earlier. So the kind of, yeah, the glass that has been washed up on the beach and kind of working with the craftsmen to, to make it. And also these kind of um, flat glass pieces kind of fixed into the window like pane like this. So in terms of this floating monument series, it's kind of uh, like kind of like the the Tori work or the kind of works that relate to kind of Okinawan history or different culture and kind of putting them into this uh, these glass works. But also there are these separate works, the kind of not the main works, but they're kind of something that's going on on the sideline. So this work as well 
kind of the the history of Okinawa. Of course, it kind of has a mixture of culture, uh, American culture, and uh, Southeast Asia is also in, included in the history. So, kind of doing this research into the history, uh, and kind of I thought I would try to do it, and it became this kind of project from doing that. So, kind of doing a work as a kind of artist in uh, inverted commas, I kind of, I also had a period where I was kind of um, hooked on using craft, craft work and glass. So kind of as, as everyday things, things that are used in everyday life, uh, they're kind of uh, existing together and that they continue to, to exist, you know, together with the lives. Of course, that, that it, um, includes art that someone buys and has in their life, but the fact that they are living, you know, in our lives together with us, this kind of, from this uh, perspective, I was kind of interested in craft. And, uh, and so these are things that I kind of slowly made uh, as time progressed. So the, the glass that um, Shitamichi has made, someone actually has it? Actually, this this glass, like selling it, is is quite difficult. Um, the the cost of the price for it is quite difficult to set. So things that are made in Okinawa, uh, trying to sell it in craft shops, that's kind of the the first priority. So then, for like two years, two years ago, I think. I, uh, Miyagi-san, a kind of craft shop, I, I sold something. But of course, if it, if it sold as craft, craft work, then it's, it's too, too expensive. But then working with this uh, glass craftsman, Yagheiji-san, kind of slowly, slowly, kind of mixing different glass and of course the shape changes but uh, I hope to kind of uh, sell them in the future and people actually use them in their daily lives that's kind of one one goal of, of, of that project and, and something similar to this which I also mentioned about um, the kind of books, uh, books that, uh, stones that are, are wrapped in books. So this is a kind of pictures of how the these stones were used. They, these are kind of black and white, uh, and kind of similar to Tsunami Boulders uh, series. Kind of about the same time I started this series as well. The Tsunami Boulders, I kind of started by filming it in color, but I kind of felt it a bit uh, uneasy or kind of something wrong about them, the images. So then from about 2015, 2016, I switched to black and white. This is the one in Kurobe, Kurobe Art Museum. And if I go to the bottom, this is kind of me selling the, the books. So after traveling, uh, wandering, and then making the books, and then tying the rocks, uh, the stones, and then selling them. So like 30,000 won is like 3,000 yen. So in kind of convenience stores, when you buy like pet bottle, they kind of give you a, an extra present. Um, so if you buy one, one book, then you get another one free kind of thing. So this is the image that I had. So in terms of this exhibition, if we return to that, the, these uh, floating monuments and the tsunami boulders, in between them you have this work, right? So then for you, they are connected, right? So in terms of the space, right? In terms of the space, um, they kind of all of the works are connected loosely. So, of course, the Okinawa glass, um, the Okinawa glass rocks, and this new piece with the stones, and also with the tsunami boulders, and the 14 years old project, they're, they're all kind of the kind of um, the idea behind them is all kind of connected somehow. 
So if specifically, the, the Tori photo series is connected with all of them. So the, the Tori photo series, those who have seen these works, um, if, if I just show them, then from 2005 to 2006 until by 2012, it continued. Um, not Japan, but countries that were occupied Japan. Uh, and these Tori gates that are left um, after the occupation. So from about 2012, I started presenting them and uh, have shown different places and traveling while traveling around. So going to uh, Taiwan, Korea, kind of uh, became more aware of the issues behind them and the, the not really uh, conveyed fully by these photo series. So then also starting to connect with the education, uh, difficult to, to say with specific words, but um, when traveling around East Asia, uh, things that I kind of felt, these ideas, the, this led to the kind of the 14 years old project. And so the, this kind of small world of, of uh, you know, the children, their idea of these borders. As uh, you see here, you know, it's written in, in Chinese and Korean and English. So while, while traveling around different countries and kind of giving these books, it's not so interesting if you say in words, but kind of small worlds are being shared, maybe this kind of image. So then uh, works that are, you know, kind of traveling around Korea, maybe they will be passed to, to the north of Korea, for example, and maybe the experience is shared between different people. Uh, the kind of maybe transcending something, transcending borders, for example. Uh, the idea that they are, are traveling, you know, this kind of sense that I had when making the books. So this kind of Tori series, this kind of um, feeling of, uh, you know, the, the issues not being fully conveyed, like kind of A and B side, you know, of the, of the work. And this TCAA exhibition, it's um, an exhibition where you can really see behind the works, the kind of thing that's gone behind into making the work in the background. Uh, if we talk about the kind of sense of an artist uh, or their imagination, and the kind of maybe they're not really independent works that are being shown here. They're kind of just more scattered and they kind of relate to one another. So while, while thinking when I'm talking, maybe I'll, when I listen afterwards, it's a bit, bit difficult, but um, just a final work, um, the, the Seto Uchi archive, which I mentioned at the start, this is from 2019, and uh, it's the second year. The kind of the purpose of this, um, so yeah, I'll just read here, like, discover a new way of looking at the scenery on an average day. Um, before you create something new, it all begins by taking another look at the past, goods that get thrown away in the corners of the small islands of Tsutuichi, and the people who once sought to collect and record them. We want to know, learn um, the things once again with our own hands in an age such as today, which has an abundance of information and um, help creating the future. This kind of text was at the entrance. Um, we don't have a, an image of the entrance, but this text was there. Um, so basically, I myself, the idea of me taking photos, not this idea, but other people's photos and records, I kind of um, put them in the limelight again and kind of archiving them. And then um, this kind of uh, local library in Aoshima, which is not being really being used, a kind of, you know, that everyone can, can take part in this and come uh, like this archive or this um, materials library that they can, they can use. 
So rather than things that I have been taken, they're kind of more like the idea of found fo photos and uh, kind of collecting them and then re-editing them and showing them, kind of gathering them again, um, this kind of project. Um, the first exhibition we had was by photographer Yoichi Midorikawa. So he's the one who's first taking taking the most pictures of maybe Bisan Strait. Uh, so of course the the photos are maybe quite well known, but um, these notebooks here, the kind of production notebooks, notebooks, and they kind of contain contact sheets. There were kind of 15 series, but um, there were also photos that weren't used. So things that were, were kind of erased or taken out, were kind of showing them in the exhibition. So rather than showing all of them, kind of copying them and then rearranging them into a book that makes them easier to access. Uh, the second one was this uh, 100 Years Tourism exhibition. So, uh, kind of 100 years um, of tourist guidebooks for that area. They kind of arranged in this chronological order, and also with the the tourist books, the kind of the history of Naoshima, of course. So, when you do this, um, what you can see is. We see over the past 10 years things that previously weren't really considered um, targets for tourism, how they are kind of related um, or interwoven with the, the history of the island, the kind of surplus, it's maybe an in incorrect word, but this kind of this kind of exhibition that allows you to see, uh, compare. Um, so before Setochi Trinale, you had the Chichu Art Museum. Um, and it started, Trinale started in 2010. And of course, you know, there were gradually more tourists, but after that started, it kind of, uh, you know, 700,000 people would come to the island. So it really, the the environment changed a lot. So I moved to the this island, but uh, before coronavirus, and then after, of course, the lockdown because of the coronavirus. Um, and during that time, I've been collecting and reading materials every day. And so it's for me, it's kind of um, the the long time. It's been a long time since I've moved around and collected materials. So I'm currently here kind of collecting research for for the next exhibition. So, of course, it's the emergency situation right now. So I will, of course, pass through, um, you know, the, the Tokyo and, and this kind of OTA. It's not this emergency declaration, but why kind of not meeting people. Um, yeah, using my time in this way. This is kind of, um, and as you see here, this is Setoichi, um, kind of movies from Naoshima, about Naoshima. I'm also doing these kind of screenings for locals. So, thank you. And uh, I got like you know, some uh, videos of the uh, the last room. <clears throat> Sorry, can you just mention something? Oh, yeah, I'll stop the, uh, my screen share and... Uh, yes, this one, right? Uh, well, uh, so those who are listening to this, uh, well, so it's this, you know, exhibition starts from my space and then like, you know, Kazuma Sachiko's space. And then like, once you go through that, then, then like, you know, the con interesting Kazuma Sachiko collection and stuff, but like, this, the final space is the, basically like, you know, the, we share the space together, like, you know, so exhibiting the fast series you know, from us. <clears throat> so, uh, like, you know, we were discussing, like, how to use this space, and uh, let's put our fast work. 
because like you know, in the act proper venues, actual exhibition, like you get to see the latest works, and then this one. So when we do, like when we finally put the uh, fast work there, it was really interesting. Like, can, can we have the close up? Yeah, this is my work. It's the uh, basically like you know, this a photo, like in shooting the hunger. So uh, can you see the uh, drawing? It's maybe like it you know, makes more sense in a way. Ah, oh, yeah, it's there. It's there. This one, yeah. So this is called Entaigo. It's like basically hunger for the fighter jets, and uh, like you know, completed in two thousand five, and. Uh, so can you go back to the? Yeah, that one, yeah. I, uh, so when, when I see these two sets of works here, I thought, like, you know, I, I found some similarities to it. And uh, maybe, like, in those people who are, like, in favor of Kazama, like, you know, may wonder what I am talking about. But, like, you know, what I just noticed immediately was that Kazama's uh, wood block is the, you know, built for sale houses, like, you know, this, uh, you know, the colorful images maybe like it's sort of one of those things being used in the advertisement and then that has been like put into wood block and then become something frightening dark you know things uh, that's my interpretation but uh, you know this sense of everyday life in color and then like you know she's trying to putting those things into somewhere dark whereas like in my case uh, you know the things built during the war and uh, those people who are taking like in those objects they are using like you know uh, black and white you know uh, so what I was trying to do on this series is to make it into like you know something really sort of flat and cheap it's not nothing special it's just part of everyday life and uh, that's what I was trying to do. Like that, that's what I was thinking. Like you know, back in the days. So in a photo, it's not really strong. As a photo, it's not that strong. But uh, it's kind of loose. So it's it's a totally opposite direction. It is something frightening, something dark. Like can bring it into today, basically in color. That's what I was trying to do. So, uh, so I don't know what the uh, Kazama was thinking, but uh, so when I saw the you know our fast to our fast works, it's uh, connected to our today's work, and it's like somehow builds our baseline. And uh, I see some similarity, maybe not similarity, but like you know, our process is totally different. But uh, I uh, yeah. And then, like, you know, sort of we see, like, you know, we decided to exchange our monograph, and then, like, you know, just writing our signatures and things. And then, like, you know, the way we write the signature was so same. I was so surprised. Yeah, really, you write like that. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it was kind of a mix of katakana and Chinese characters, right? It's kind of yeah, just kind of like children, you know, writing. It's funny to see. It's kind of really funny, really kind of embarrassing, but so even though they kind of look different, when we're doing the exhibition together, building it together, we're kind of finding commonalities between us, kind of this understanding uh, of kind of humanity or human Elements is kind of, yeah, similar. Yeah, so in my case, uh, you know, like uh, the uh, Kazama was building something from the scratch, basically, and then everything is done by herself. And I was looking at that, I... Because, like, in this exhibition, like, you know, there's no curator in it. So my space, Kazama's space, like, you know, building a wall and all those design layout, all those things. So, like, you know, because the curator is not there, so uh, so what we feel is really important, what we value more, is really coming out really strongly. And uh, whilst looking at each other's spaces, so the output is totally different, approach is so different, but... Uh, there's something in common and something we sort of we take important it's like different but like you know that was really good to be aware of it so the kind of the idea there's no curator someone involved in in designing the space together the fact that we did it 
by ourselves. This exhibition is kind of really unique, I think. I really hope that, you know, the, the visitors will enjoy that part of it, um, uh, both Shitamichi's work and my work. So to that extent, like, uh, you know, the uh, exhibition or show at MOT is a bit weird, strange, you know, to that extent. So for good or bad reasons, you know, usually you'd have like a professional come in and then kind of summarize everything. But in ours, there's kind of bits that are unresolved, I think. But I think that's also kind of an interesting part of our exhibition. Yeah, excessively doing here and there. And, uh, but I think like that's what it's good about it. It's kind of, yeah, like noisy parts of it, I think. It's kind of, oh, my space is too dark or something. So, like, during the making of the, the exhibition, like, talking, like, how to arrange the space between us, but the end, like, kind of like a clapperboard. So, it's, in that sense, it's not like an ordinary exhibition, you know, we were kind of working separately, but... The space was really big, and because we had to do it by ourselves, and the TCA is to support the uh, mid career, you know, for them to further, you know, like expecting like an us to sort of use TCA as his step stones in a way. So, so like a monograph or space, we got so much stress out of it. But uh, we done something out of it, you know. So like there are quite a lot of things like which we learned. Anyway, that's how I summarize. Anyway, I'll pass mic to uh, Kazama. Thank you very much. Hi, that's, yeah, meet you again. Thank you. So, um, Shitamichi also mentioned, um, but so from um, April to 25th to May the 31st, um, the emergency declaration was, uh, was stated and, uh, but actually we have um, reopened, we will reopen June 1st uh, with reservation tickets only. So um, this will continue until uh, June 20th, but actually this will uh, has been extended until the 22nd, and there are no days closed during that period. So uh, the details are on the Tokyo Arts and Space website. Um, please take a look. So then we will just close this session, and then from 2.30 we will ask uh, Sachiko Kazama to talk. Thank you. Okay, from now we would like to start the uh, broadcast online Artist Talk by Contemporary Art Award 2019-2021 uh, Exhibition Award winner uh, Sachiko Kazama's Artist Talk. Uh, I am Funabashi from Tokyo Arts and Space. Um, and about the award, Tokyo Contemporary Art Award, abbreviated as TCAA, um, established in 2018 by Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Tokyo Arts and Space. Um, a contemporary art prize that focuses on mid-career artists uh, based in Japan. So over uh, several years, the artists get support uh, and uh, encourage their career development over uh, on the international stage. This exhibition is the, the first winners of the TCAA, uh, Shitamichi, Motoyuki and Kazama Sachiko, and it's taking place at the Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo. So, um, just now we had uh, the talk by Shitamichi, and from now on, we'd like to ask uh, Sachiko Kazama to talk. Um, we'll be talking directly from the venue, and we will show the, the exhibition, and then ask uh, Sachiko to talk about individual works. Also, we will be um, archiving this talk and uh, adding English afterwards. So then, we'd like to ask uh, Sachiko Kazama. Hi everyone, uh, nice to meet you. Kazuma Sachiko, my name is Kazuma Sachiko. So like in today's uh, gallery tour, so uh, not in the uh, talk format, but like, you know, I myself uh, would like to introduce my works. So, you know, uh, after the uh, lockdown that has been extended and this exhibition, I was like, you know, I was absolutely uh, desperate. But uh, luckily, uh, 
from the day after tomorrow, this uh, exhibition will be open again. So I'm absolutely happy. So with this sort of like, you know, my uh, me being content, I'd like to talk about my works. So uh, this exhibition is the award ceremony exhibition under TCAA, and I normally, like you know, when I do my solo shows, I uh, put the uh, title along with the concept, and uh, I create sort of like logo out of it. You know, that that's the initial stage of my, uh, you know, the uh, creativity to like you know boost up my uh, motivation. That I'm one of those people. So for this exhibition, I put the title. It's a bit difficult to read, but uh, it's a magic mountain. And the magic mountain comes from the uh, you know uh, the uh, the novel written by the uh, Thomas Mann, and uh, the title is the English translation of it. And uh, in Japanese, it's Manoyama. And if you read it in Japanese, it's uh, some really sort of frightening, spooky. But like, you know, if it's translated into English, like Magic Mountain, then it's kind of sort of sounds a bit like a jolly in a way, like a magic tricks or something, you know. So, uh, so. Uh, you see, our life or like in our soundings, you know, the various things are happening, changing. It's almost like, uh, you know, things got changed through the magic. And uh, with this sort of mindset, I looked into Magic Mountain and then created the works. So, uh, yeah, starting off, introduce my works. So, uh, once you. Uh, Getting into my space, it's the works related to uh, mountains. So uh, after reading Magic Mountains, uh, I was inspired. But like you know, like you know, sort of like you know, the, my uh, 25 years of artistic life, I sort of realized that uh, I've been making works to do with mountains. So I like created a collection of those uh, mountain-related works. This one, so uh, made in 2019. Fujiyama Tobiko and Reset. So Fujiyama Fu is like a Fu refers to a phoenix in Japanese. And also the Mount Fuji is there. And uh, back in the days, uh, Mount Fuji, like in you know, sort of a people, sort of like, you know, sort of a soul eternity in Mount Fuji. So to that extent, so I juxtaposed uh, Mount Fuji and the Tobiko, the girl, like topical, like sort of somehow reminded us of like someone jumping into the train or committed suicide, but she's like sort of flying over the Mount Fuji, erupting. So the top part is the woodcut print, but the bottom part is the actual block, and they're making some sort of modification to it, so giving different impression. So I just yeah sort of juxtapose them. So the top part it says game over. So it's like you know, coming to the end and then like you know pressing the reset button or something. But bottom part is like an excitement, jolly. So like you know revival, reborn. So game over, reset. So uh, they can be like you know, sort of uh, arranged in different orders. So like a so it's like an A side, B side, sort of like perpetual cycle in a way. And moving on to the next work at the top, it's really old work. So 1992, and uh, it's the Ever Rising series. It's like from that series, you know. So Ever Rising is the uh, you know this uh, spectacular economic gro growth, and then like you know, we came to the like you know the uh, the collapse of bubble economy. You know, that's something we believed and we applied this structure to everything. So I like and you know, collected all those images and then the uh, like and created a work out of it. So this work work so I just left only left part of the Mount Fuji and then like creating this ever rising structure and somehow like you, know, you we feel somehow odd in this image. And the ones at the bottom is uh, it's the 2001, from 2001, 
and uh, I'm not going to go to the forest ever. Is the uh, actually that the title I just put it recently, the initial title. Uh, I presented this work at the gallery Yamaguchi first time, but uh, I don't remember the initial title. So it totally like sort of came off my mind. I can't even remember a word of it. So this is a new title I put. So it's related to Mount Fuji. So the uh, it's the uh, the uh, forest, uh, you know, the Aokigahara forest, you know, which spreads around the Mount Fuji, and uh, the soul is floating round, and then the uh, hands and Gretel, you know, the the fairy tale. So, uh, like, I couldn't really remember the title of this, but uh, I don't really remember how the my motivation, the concept, but uh, it's all related Mount Mount Fuji and the life and death. Those are the concepts. And then, like, moving on to the other side of the wall, is a series again. So these works he, uh, I presented uh, 2020 at the uh, Mujinto production. It's a solo exhibition, a cement cemetery. So cement cemetery. Uh, before the, before that work, you know, sort of, uh, I did the exhibition uh, at the Krobe Art Museum under the title of uh, Con Concrete Suite. So like the same series basically, and uh, what is there is the woodcut print, but uh, I did a, a frottage. So this is the first uh, block and you know the motif is a buko mountain and that mountain back in the days around the Meiji era was like in you know, sort of a beautiful mountain and once we get into Taisho era uh, because you know sort of we got into a sort of an industrialization and the modernization and there's a demand increased demand for the concrete so uh, people back in the day started uh, uh, yeah, exploiting the uh, sort of start extracting limestones from the mountain, and uh, slowly, slowly, the, from the top of the mountain, the uh, landscape got changed of this mountain. So the currently it's a little bit like the ones on the right bottom corner, and then if you see that image, maybe eventually we would get to the top in the future, something like a you know the uh, graveyard, sort of like you know, adding up my imagination. It's been like a pyramid, basically. So, like, you know, to make this work, uh, two years ago, I went to uh, I went to Bukosan by myself, and it was in the middle of winter, strong sunlight, you know, the backlight and so on and so forth. So I couldn't really see the mountain, and I was like, you know, I was there, but I couldn't really see it. And on the way back, when I was taking train from Chichibu, just suddenly I saw. Like, uh, yeah, I, I could see the mountain, actually. And it was really frightening. Truly fr frightening. Like, you know, when I saw it on a photo, like, and you know, I thought that was really cool. But, uh, you know, the surface of the mountain was really artificially sort of like, you know, cut down. And uh, I, s yeah, really felt that uh, this is man-made and it's so radically done. And this is something like, you know, this is a mountain I have to make it like into my work. So in the corner here, we have a uh, gate pier number three. Um, so before I made the last work uh, in 2009, um, the ex exhibition Concrete Suite at uh, Kurobe City Art Museum. So when I uh, was invited by the museum to make this work, I didn't really have a, an interest in the Hokuriku area. And I'd never been there before. Uh, so when I heard Kurobe, I remembered the Kurobe Dam, which is famous, and also this Kurobe Dam, uh, the number four dam is kind of like uh, the Project X TV show, like for, for Japanese. It's kind of like this, 
this kind of uh, in re reconstruction efforts or in the history of uh, construction, this kind of heroic monument. But uh, Kurobe, I thought maybe I could use it as a kind of motif. Um, so then I started to do re research. So that I went to Kurobe, and my first impression, I kind of climbed the mountain and saw it. And was kind of overwhelmed by the size of it, the scale. I'd never really been aware of it before, but, but because it's number four, so there must be a number one, number two, and number three dam. So then when I go to Kurobe again, I thought I would like to research the other three uh, dams. And as I did this research, I found out about number three, um, a kind of the need for electricity during the war. It was kind of uh, a rushed job to make this hydroelectronic uh, power station. And this this number three dam uh, in the construction, there were many Korean laborers who um, kind of lost their lives. A kind of work that the Japanese didn't want to do, kind of using dynamite, um, this kind of work, dangerous work. And learning about that, I had never really known about that before. And of course, I'd never been aware, and you wouldn't be aware unless you really go and research about it. So kind of wanting to, to make a record of this, um, I went about my work. So you see here, uh, this is a kind of ruins, uh, historic ruins that have been submerged in the water. Um, so the kind of international voice would kind of uh, try to save this, uh, you know, ruins. But it's made to look like a dam in this uh, image. So these are the laborers, the Korean laborers that I said, and they're kind of enshrined in this, uh, in this dam. So it, when it comes to the, the original woodblock print, uh, one person is kind of missing, it's disappeared. So when the visitor visitors, you know, when the viewer comes and sees, I, I hope they will kind of enjoy looking to see who has uh, disappeared. So this is a series of six, uh, the Concrete Suite exhibition, the kind of the main work of that exhibition. So this Kurobe Gold, it comes from the uh, Ring of Nibelung by uh, Richard Wagner, the prelude. This is uh, Kurobe Gold, a kind of opera work. So this Nibelung ring, the Ring of Nibelung, uh, so something that was submerged in the Rhine River, this pure gold, became kind of desirous and uh, it became cursed and in the end the, the gods were kind of uh, marched to their doom. So the, so the first scene of, of this, the kind of the idea of stealing um, resources of the Rhine River and this kind of idea that the desire grows, I kind of overlaid with this historic, uh, the history of Kurobe Dam and the power station. So this kind of like cover image for the series uh, called Kurobe Gold. So there's kind of a, an image that it was based on. And uh, Kurobe Electricity, the company that is behind the kind of construction of this power station, they made this uh, picture postcard. And the kind of pictures of uh, hot springs and other uh, spots, in tourist spots in Kurobe. So the kind of the these postcards, that they were put in a bag, uh, and the cover, uh, this is the kind of cover image. And the lines here, you see, they kind of point to these places, these tourist points, but this information has been kind of erased. 
And so rather it's like the human way of looking at the landscape, a kind of looking uh, for the next uh, location to kind of uh, develop, to take resources. And this next work uh, called Lorelei, uh, so the, that appears in this, uh, the Rheingold uh, story, so in terms of the German old folklore, there's kind of this uh, magic nymph who lives in the, the Rhine River, resides in the river, and when people pass, they kind of uh, cause a disaster uh, by the river current. So um, this figure was changed into Lorelei from the, the Lion Gold story. And uh, this shows the sluice gate of the Kurobe number no. 2 hydroelectronic power station, 1994. Uh, actually, the, the power station was lost uh, due to a landslide, buried in the landslide. So it's kind of this uh, disaster caused by the heavy rain and then the, the curse of Lorelei is kind of overlapped in this work. The next work, uh, Fasolt and Fafner, does this also appears in the Lion Gold? Um, the kind of giants, uh, two giants that appear, they're very strong. But in, in the story, they kind of deceived and made to sign this kind of unlawful contract. And then they're taken and uh, locked away in this Valhalla, Valhalla castle. So they kind of in this image they are the builders, the ones constructing this check dam. Uh, Toyama, where this uh, is from, it's kind of it was early to develop these kind of check dams. So um, it has an association in this way. This next work, um, Dwarf Kingdom. So in, in Rheingold, the story of Rheingold, um, the kind of exchanging gold for love, there's this uh, dwarf named Alberich, and kind of he borrows the power of the gold and returns to kind of the kingdom beneath the earth. So this is illustrated here, and it's made to look like uh, the, the turbines of the power station. It's kind of my personal image. But the kind of Kurobe Dam power station, it's not actually above ground, it's actually in the ground, in the mountains. So it kind of um, it's, it overlaps with this image here, I think. This work is um, New Order. So in the in the work, the, the words appear, of course. So why this title? Um, the kind of the gods from the story, um, Wotan is the name of the god. He's kind of all-powerful, almighty. And he has a, a long spear, and by using this, wielding this a spear, he controls uh, the, the people. There's kind of this magic word inscribed on the spear, but it, in the this in the story, it's spoken about, but it's not explained exactly what it is. It's kind of a secret. So, when thinking about this kind of strong word, this power, word with power, um, what I thought about was um, this new order advocated by Nazis. And so, yeah, this building of a new order was the image that came to mind. So the idea of the, the power of God, uh, the, the humans, it comes into our hands. And it's kind of like a curse, a spoken curse, this new order. And in the image, you see like the hole of the dam and a, and a plug that kind of controls the water. 
Swinde. It. it looks like it's uh, in hell, like water going to hell. And it's really, it really is the, like the image. When I saw it, it's like the humans really have the power over nature. And so I've included in this that the humans are kind of designing nature, this idea, yeah, emphasizing this. Uh, the next work, uh, in the, the Lion Gold story, the Valhalla castle being constructed, and the, the gods move behind uh, the castle. So this is also um, based on the story. This is kind of the based on the dam. So in the story, at, at the end, it is kind of the mist clears and uh, the castle is revealed. So here, like the the spray of from the water when the water was released, um, the the laborers who kind of helped to build the the dam are, are kind of appearing in the mist. So they have like scoops and uh, drills, hammers. So, in actual fact, when when you go to see the dam, um, on the walls of the dam, there are uh, sculptures of these these people who sacrifice their lives. They kind of they had accidents. So yeah, the the sculptures were added to the dam afterwards. The fact that these People are kind of in the background, in the darkness. I wanted to express that in this work. So, like moving on to the other walls. <coughs> so, uh, these works are no, no longer related to mountains, but uh, so the series on this wall, it's a new series. It's a bit like a, it's a bit like a trailer basically. So like in three works are uh, like an exhibited here. So this one is called A Target Dreams of Becoming a Hunter. And uh, so this work, the title came uh, from uh, uh, Hannah Ardent, German philosopher, and uh, she wrote an uh, article on, it's called a, Ref a Reflection on Violence. And this is one line in that text. It's like, you know, the, the title came from there. And uh, so in the context, basically, uh, so like, you know, there's one persecuted and the one persecuted eventually, like, you know, the, the accumulation of hatred. So they, found, so they find someone who is weaker than themselves and then they will start persecuting them. So it's a chain of violence. And uh, when I heard this you know, statement, I just re it reminded me of the lyrics in Train Train from uh, Blue Hearts, a Japanese punk, punk band. And uh, so, like uh, in the past, today, you know, in the present, the chain of violence is like, you know, continues forever. And uh, when I look back on this, you know, just, I was like looking, thinking about my uh, early days. And uh, when I was in junior high school, I often got bullied. So like, you know, going to school, like people used to call me like, you know, you're a ghost, never come to school, like, you know, sort of people picking up on me. And uh, on that point, I didn't really sort of uh, did like, I didn't like, you know, went against, but uh, you know, once I went home, I was like a sort of like a dreaming, like say, you know, I'm going to use some black magic to beat them. And uh, reading some notes, you know, on black magic by Shibusawa Tatsuhiko, like, and how can I sort of curse them to death or something, you know, that type of hatred is something, you know, that everybody has. And uh, it's not like a, you know, they're spontaneous. I mean, like, you know, it's it's still, I don't forget, th forget them. So the uh, violence or hatred, like, it sort of continues forever. So that's the image. So, like, uh, maybe this girl figure, 
is like you know she's on the justice side taking revenge like you know we don't know maybe she's just like you know doing giving the violence to you know sort of a, to the other person like you know misdirected anger or something so and the next one it's same as the uh, the fujisan work like you know mount fuji work like uh, ever rising uh, structure so so my early work is in the last room so and on the uh, next year of that to that like you know sort of uh, i was i was looking to a daily object you know or like uh, ideas in our life in japan say like uh, buying house or like you know buying a you know the tombstones or buying you know the owning a car you know which somehow like can become a motivation for our living but uh, we get haunted and without but and yet like you know without that like we can't like you know go ahead or move ahead so i was trying to sort of criticize the idea of this you know from the cradle to the graveyard where consumption life of you know the consumption like and just uh, just sticks round so if you look really close up you know the uh, the surface of the wood or like in the surface of the stone has been done with uh, wood, you know the engraving and i was using a chinese ink so uh, you know i was trying level best to like you know create this uh, thing lines and i can't imagine like you know me doing this like and this is really technical hyper technical you know to ha- like you know recreate the uh, you know the surface of wood and stone so like you know, if you visit uh, please uh, please pop in and have a look this is called a stupa chart so that's the title of this work and the next one is the uh, go leave that's the title so uh, it's in the se- same series as the uh, a target dreams of becoming a hunter and this work in 2016 when when i did the uh, exhibition called the uh, blitz school of uh, ludite and uh, so like you know just looking back my uh, you know the uh, school days you know melancholic uh, truant you know those days somehow dark you know sort of uh, introverted sort of emotional feelings and then moving on to this space is like again those dark side of it of me but uh, it's a new works so uh, like uh, yeah so like you know, referring to the uh, exhibition title magic mountain so i was sort of uh, recreating the world of uh, the world of magic mountain in my own way and uh, when i was reading this uh, magic mountain it's just absolute lockdown and uh and quite uh, strange special you know the uh, circumstances and i was alone i mean like in sort of even like normally every day like i'm kind of, sort of looking myself up in my room and then like immersing myself to my thoughts but uh, but uh, you know the everyone is doing the same thing like me staying at home and then like spending time thinking so uh, i saw a bit of hope in it so as i was thinking like as people are thinking maybe like you know they sort of like start to get introspection and then eventually we may lead to sort of like come up with a solution with whatever the problems which we are face, uh, facing so like you know so i was seeing the hope in it and maybe i was seeing too much hope in this but uh, these are the works so the works on the uh, each side of the walls it's called the uh, lunge vault so like you know, based on the lungs so the uh, pneumonia and uh, you know the severity of uh, you know those things you know the issues to do with uh, physical conditions you know sort of like coming up on the like you know, news every day on the tv and uh, it's i think like we are aware of these things more like i mean we think about lungs more and uh, in the magic mountain uh the the setting is uh, just before the begin uh, just before the world war 1 and uh, tuberculosis was well like a deadly disease back then and uh, around the uh, world war 1 you know the uh, spanish flu was in pandemic so the uh, you know lung disease and death was really like you know, close you know so that was a setting and at the same time 
Uh, modernization, you know, the uh, after the uh, industrial revolu revolution, mechanization, and so on and so forth. So the uh, industry as well as war, like uh, everything's done, like you know, along with the uh, advanced machines, and that leads us to the globalism. So in that sort of situation, like in still like in 100 years ago, but uh, what had happened, what happened 100 years ago, still sort of impacting us today. So I focused on that, and then like and I built these series of works. So this one is uh, Lungenwald, Lungen in German means lungs, and the vault is uh, forest. So it's like I just made it up. This was so the the, the vessels in the lungs, like and I sort of uh, I like uh, represented as the branches of a tree. So it's kind of sort of realistic physical our internal physical body. And that reminded us of death as well. And I was using a wood, same like a wood block, and then I can come up with different works. Like, you know, that was a concept. So, creating something like contrasting. So, this one, so Lungenwald referring death, then this is the. Uh, love so by up, having the upside down uh, like uh, reversing the uh, shape of the uh, the vessels in the lungs it's uh, it gives the image of linden the tree you know like uh, the, the the piece by Schubert, like uh, at the bottom under the bottom of a uh, linden like you talk about love you know something romantic so using a same wood block and then creating two different images I had like my own concept to it. For example, this is war and peace, and this one is uh, so the mountain destroyed by the industrialization, and then the uh, the primitive mountain like was full of nature, pop nature. So it's contrasting, but the base is same. So somehow, like you know, let the uh, like viewers to imagine. So that's why I decided to use the uh, same wood block. And this one, it's a Dragon Ball War One, uh, the uh, the very fast tank. Like you know, that was the time when tank was being used, and it's called uh, Mark One, the British tank. And uh, that got split into two. That looks like lungs, and in the middle that somehow sort of like representing the uh, like a spine like shape is the uh, British soldiers with gas mask mask and the world War one is the uh, you know mechanization or modernization like that was the uh, very fast turning point so that was a time when the uh, you know the poisonous, poisonous gas beans started being used so the Germans came up with this impellate is the poisonous gas and then uh, it's also known as the mustard gas and then the uh, Germans attacking British so using the same wood block which is on the other side. I, yeah, so the original image is blurred out, and then the, uh, like, and I put the Christmas tree, and then it's uh, somehow like in a homey situation, like, you know, the uh, some communication between German and British soldiers. And this did, uh, it's called, uh, sorry. I got the uh, text with me. Yeah, it's called a uh, Christmas truce. So uh, this did actually take place. It's like the war got stopped because of the Christmas, and uh, no one commanded it. It just happened spontaneously, and. Uh, it's like, you know, the moment of accommodation, you know, like uh, if we manage to accumulate the understanding, you know, the mutual understanding of each other, and eventually we may lead to like, so, like peace, basically. So it's, it's, it's uh, maybe dreaming or romantic, but like, uh, that's what I depicted here. So this work um, is the industrial mountains. And you have these mined mountains that have been mined and uh, this kind of symbol of the Industrial Revolution, the steam train running through the middle. 
I personally really like、uh, mines, the ruins of mines, and also I like trains, but、uh, I mean, I like trains, but、uh, they, have, they have negative associations. They're like、uh, in terms of the mines, the kind of、uh, image of overmining. This kind of ambivalence is also an element. So, on the other side, a、uh, primitive vein. So, on the, the original、uh, woodcut, we have this、um, acrylic drawing, and it's kind of this ominous world like a curse. Um, mountains used to be a place where female gods resided.、Uh, this idea in Japan in the past.、Um, so they really had a strong power, and for humans, they kind of lived in fear and kind of,、um, kind of yeah, offerings, making offerings to the gods. So I, I kind of created this image of the mountain. And then on this time,、uh, a work that I really made a big effort to create was this work,、uh, Dazao Burberg. So actually, I wanted to make a work like this in my 20s,、um, but kind of as I go making about work、uh, with social issues, including issues, I, I couldn't come to make this work depicting mountain as a single motive.、Um, but this time, Working with a magic mountain,、um, like thinking about、uh, this kind of twofold state of different events and kind of this、uh, view of life and death, I managed to, to, to find a, a form that I was satisfied with in this work. So, a hint to this、uh, comes from Hans Karstop, who is kind of this、uh, character in the magic mountain. And、uh, he imagines, he kind of remembers the past and imagines a boat on a lake. And the sun and moon are rising together. He had this mysterious experience. And this is expressed in this work. So the, the、uh, part above is the printed part. And in the woodcut below, Um, the kind of the, the lines have been reduced, and the kind of this heavy、uh, line creates the moon. And then above, we have the, the sun, the day, daylight. So the kind of、uh, day and night together,、uh, and they kind of represent life and death. But in, in this picture, they are not separate, they're kind of、uh, two sides of the same thing. Um, this I kind of ex expressed in this work.、Uh, the, the Alps, you know, the, the peaks that you see here, I, I really enjoyed doing this, this part. And here you have this boat, which、uh, I kind of added afterwards. It just goes to show that it's a lake. Um, and just、uh, briefly, I'll talk about the installation,、uh, which is on the other side.、Um, people who have read Magic Mountain, maybe you can recognize、uh, things this uh, image of uh, pandemic uh, biological weapons,、uh, kind of old works that、uh, kind of act as hints to understand the story, and also with、uh, kind of antique postcard. Uh, for my collection. So, if,、uh, if visitors come and see each of these works, it's kind of like this、uh, mystery that they can try and solve. And also, in taking this magic mountain as the, as the theme, I wrote a, a long uh, text, uh, 13,000 word uh, text. <laughs> 
Uh, probably there's no one that has read all of it. And it's kind of uh, this self-absorbed uh, um, writing, but but there are lots of hints in the in the book in the in my text to help solve this mystery. So here we have this QR code and uh, the text, the 13,000 word text, uh, you can read from here. So if you have an interest, please, uh, yeah, take it. It's really, I'm just reading that much of text, it's really hard anyway, but... Uh, and then like moving out from this dark room, it's really shiny. And then I just, like all my large scale works are here. Yeah, this one. Uh, 2017, when I got invited uh, for the uh, open studio at the uh, Fuji Art Museum, and it's called Baron Kindai Goshimaro in Iwaijima. So Kindai Goshu is like a modern five main sports in Olympic. So shooting, horse riding, fencing, swimming, and marathon. So it's five, right? Yeah. So like you know, these five sports combined, and then with a costume, like sort of a knight costume, and then he's, uh, so Chiha is the uh, Type 1997 Chiha medium tank used during World War uh, One. So like, you know, that uh, that tank is like, you know, modified into a horse and then, and the knight is on it. And then he just landed at the uh, Io Island. I mean, like, and I'm sorry, getting confused. But uh, this night is my in my setting is the uh, Baron Nishi, is the one who won the uh, uh, gold medal during the uh, Los, uh, the LA Olympic. So he's a Baron, and this is his ghost. That's that's a setting. But anyway, so he was uh, he died he killed in action you know at the uh, Iwajima and he was the uh, tank regiment commander. So like you know I just incorporate that sort of like a tragic element. And this one, it's a wild wind of the uh, 13th district. It's my first, very fast, large scale, you know, the uh, work. So the width is 4.2 meters. And uh, I back at, up to this work, like I was like you know, comp uh, combining like a small works to fill up the space. But uh, this a particular curator said that uh, he told me that uh, if you're going to carry on like this, you will not be interesting. And uh, and like basically, he just gave me the advice that the size matters. And then like, and I was like, oh, okay, you know. Because, like, you know, that idea, I've never ever thought about it, you know, that, the, like, the work was large-scale work. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, then, yes, you know, I'll make a big one, and this is the one. And uh, when the curator saw this, he was absolutely stunned. He didn't expect this big. And this, again, like, I used the Chinese ink. So uh, I presented uh, this uh, work at the uh, Criterium at the uh, Mito Art Tower. Um, and on the main, you know, the uh, museum space, uh, Hibino Katsuhiko was doing the Hibino Expo. And when I heard that story about Hibino, I was like, you know, Expo, you know. And then, like, you know, I decided to, like, uh, use, uh, you know, the uh, Tokyo Expo, which did never happened as a motif. And uh, so if you can see it, right, you know, that building is really sort of a bubble, so representing bubble economy, sort of like a you know, building. Uh, sitting on top of a battleship, and uh, that this building was built for the uh, you know Tokyo Expo initially, and built on the uh, Yamato, which is the built with the concept of all big gun ship, 
sort of. And uh, we don't know whether the uh, ship is fighting or like, you know, sort of a becoming a ghost of some sort and then floating around the Tokyo. It's sort of, it's, it, it's kind of fantasy, basically. But, uh, but if you think about Olympic, right, it's like, you know, it's this large scale public project, like, you know, once it's decided to be done, then they can't, we can't stop, no one stops it. So, uh, like, it's, it's a bit like irony, basically, I'm trying to sort of incorporate. And uh, when I look at this one, I sort of like, you know, the, basically, the situation has never been changed. And uh, yes, like, you know, sort of being in the same scales, you know, the sense of scale. And this one is the other Heisoka rising, a uh, raging battle ship the dead end so this work has been uh, uh, presented a year after the great east japan earthquake and on the earthquake on that year it uh, was like you know things were so beyond me and i couldn't really do anything about it and uh, i i was just like simply I, I could only think and uh, i was like i was trying to think of what i could do and uh, if i can draw then maybe I can record something. And that somehow I sort of very realized that uh, so I, maybe I can just look into this, uh, you know, the nuclear industry, the world of industry, uh, nuclear industry, and uh, so, you know, those explosions and like, you know, this huge disasters, all those things, like I decided to sort of incorporate and then like you know, sort of create some sort of history of nuclear disaster in Japan. To explain this briefly, so the left is the uh, nuclear cloud from Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Bikini, and then the uh, Daigo Fukuryumaru, the ship, got like you know sucked into it, and uh, the Japanese battleship Nagato which had been used during the uh, bikini atoll experiment, you know, the uh, hydrogen bomb. And in the middle, there's a blast from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And then at the top of uh, the stem head, uh, there's the uh, headquarter of TEPCO. And again, sucked into the tsunami, almost dead. And uh, if you see the right top, it's the uh, Japanese oceanologic research vessel called Mirai, and this vessel was a nuclear powered vessel called Mutsu, but they just uh, like took out the uh, reactor and then put the uh, diesel engine. And then, like you know, what is so ironic is that uh, this Mirai vessel was like you know doing the research of the contamination of seawater around Fukushima. And uh, that was so ironic. I mean, like, you know, sound, sounded like a you know, fabrication of history to me. It's, you know, by fabricating it, like, you know, that vessel was like, you know, the nuclear powered initially. And now today we would call it as like uh, some, like, you know, the vessel is doing research for the Fukushima situation. So the next work comes up, um, also shown in the same sort of exhibition. Uh, prison nuke fission 235 so then uh, the Eisenhower nuclear nuclear testing center and then the figures involved in like the peaceful use of nuclear energy in Japan are kind of circling around it kind of like the opening the first page of uh, the history of nuclear energy in Japan Then this work, um, this is, so in the following year, 2013, uh, non-human crossing, this was shown at uh, Roppongi crossing. So um, directly after the 311 disaster, the kind of this idea of bond, uh, people being connected, but actually, but this kind of idea of suspicion in society and kind of uh, surveying the population, this kind of uh, using the Shibuya crossing where there were lots of live cameras and uh, um, security cameras, 
that people are being watched. This kind of specific, uh, special, you know, place that is being used as the setting for this work. Uh, this is kind of proletariat writings, and you see parts have been censored, and also the Yokohama, Yokohama incident. And in the center, we have like the social network sites, the addresses, these kind of uh, magic uh, signs, this kind of ominous, uh, how can I say, people gathering, exactly because people gather, this kind of this uncomfortable uh, atmosphere. But looking at it now, uh, I've, be, I've been, someone commented that it's, uh, you know, social distance because of the coronavirus. Um, this is kind of, doesn't fit to today. So in, now the the cameras, same cameras are being used to observe how much people are are going out. Um, you know, in the in these times, so it's kind of become this very strange uh, world that I've depicted here. And then looking behind, so this is the biggest I've made. <coughs> So far, so it's like 16 po uh, six point four meters, and it's called this Olympic two six eighty twenty six eighty. And uh, so when I started like sort of thinking about this work, it's around the time when you know the Tokyo Olympic twenty twenty has been decided, and this you know the uh, we had this concept of omotenashi hospitality things, and uh, I started thinking like you know something strange will start around this, so my next week has to be has to do with Olympic, and then Olympic is like a gigantic media event, so uh, I needed the size you know totalitarian size. So the size is what I just decided from the beginning. And what is uh, depicted here is not like a criticism over the uh, against Olympic, but uh, it's uh, basically a depiction of the Olympic opening ceremony at a dystopia controlled with the uh, eugenic ideology. So this eugen eugenics is basically selection of people. So... Uh, people are selected. So this stadium itself looks ruins, or maybe it's under construction. So somehow you can, like, it's up to the uh, viewers, basically, you know, the massive stadium. And uh, from the left side, it's core, and the middle is Ots and hair table. So like, you know, Japanese way of ranking. And from left to right, uh, people are being ranked. It's like from the higher to lower. That's a structure. And the high-ranked people, they are supreme boys, men. And the ones in the middle is often... It's so basically like a secondary gender, so basically girls. And the ones on the right is the ones uh, oppressed. And the ones right in the middle, it's not called, you know, the uh, you know, coronavirus. Uh, because like, you know, when I made this one, it's like uh, 2018, three years ago, and uh, I wasn't, obviously like, I wasn't thinking about COVID-19, you know, but uh, if I look at now, it looks like COVID-19, you know, coronavirus, but... Uh, what well, is getting shot against to the uh, that song image is the uh, you know the supreme of supremacist you know the man gets like you know like a shot as the human bazooka, so it's basically the egg is the image, and then to have well, it's basically like a human sacrifice to leave the uh, uh, better or supreme uh, genes, and that's a climax of the uh, ceremony. And the ones on the right side, side is those also again like a human sacrifice, so different types. So the ones selected and then no longer being required, they get yeah, and they get oppressed and pushed away. Those type of genes basically. 
and then mixed up with the concrete and then become a human sacrifice. So it's a cruel scene, basically, depiction of the scene. And the stone statues. So in Japanese, a stone woman, like in sort of this word, umazume, so those who can't uh, have a baby, it's, it's kind of sort of a discrimination. But uh, about eugenic ideology, you know, the uh, whatever the policy taken for the boys and girls or men and women, so I just kind of overlapped the ideas. And then, like, and I use these images as like a symbolic meaning to it. So when I came up with the idea, like, you know, with this idea, like, uh, uh, four years ago, and then when this work is completed, uh, 2018, we didn't even dream of, like, you know, what's going to happen to the Olympic, <coughs> as the Aso Taro said, like, in you know, the uh, cursed Olympic. It's, like, you know, that's the exact situation. But anyway, like, you know, I was making, not knowing those things, you know. But on the subconscious level, something I felt uncomfortable and then that somehow, like in you know, my imagination, like you know, the, the reality is just getting closer to my imagination, and that's something sort of like and you know, I feel frightening. Anyway, like you know, I'm like you know, we are short of time, so uh, hurrying up. So after this space, there's a little corridor where in the glass case and then yeah you get to see the uh, the materials like you know that I I referred you know to make these works so second books and pamphlet and so on and so forth and in the last space as the stamish explained before it's a shared space and uh, so basically like you know, we're just expecting like you know our very fast series and as Shitamich uh, ex explained, so, so we are not really related, but somehow, like, you know, we found a connection to it. And uh, it was really interesting space. And what was really surprising to me, uh, what I was surprised was that, uh, so when I did the, uh, Exhibition at the uh, gallery Yamaguchi at Shinbashi. It's not there, but uh, the work, you know, that I presented in 1998, uh, Shitamichi's work, apparently it was exhibited in the Inakshi gallery in Shinbashi. Shinbashi. So, not knowing <coughs> each other, you know, gallery Yamaguchi and Inaks, it's really close, you know, and that's how we started our artistic life. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it leaves us some sort of, like, you know, the mark to it, in a way. And uh, the works I presented is, like, you know, because based on the awards, but, uh, well, like, you know, feel like, you know, sort of we living in the same age and then trying level best. And then with this award, we, we somehow like to come to understand, you know, each other's practice, you know, observing and all those things. It was really in inspiring. And uh, as I said before, you know, to build this space, like you know, we didn't have like a spatial designer or like you know, we didn't have any curators to select, you know, to select the works. So everything was done, you know, by itself. So it's like you know, I I'm absolutely attached to it. So uh, yeah, it's more than other exhibitions, and that's why, uh, like you know, because of the lockdown, like you know, when this exhibition was stopped, I was absolutely shocked. And uh, it's almost as if, like, you know, my son or my kids being taken away by, like, you know, someone else or something, you know, I was that level of sadness. So, uh, like, you know, we only have 22 more days, but uh, please do make effort to visit and see. And I'll be chuffed. So, thank you, Sachiko Kazama. Um, for this really in-depth explanation. So then, uh, we'd like to finish soon. So as uh, Sachiko just mentioned, um, until May 31st, we had the emergency measures and the expedition were closed. But from uh, June 1st, we have reopened with this reservation ticket system. 
And uh, so please take care and uh, come and visit the exhibition. Um, and it will be extended from the June 20th until 22nd of June. Um, yes, yeah, so we hope you can visit. Uh, and the details are on the TOCUS uh, website. Um, TCAA will enter its fourth year this year, and there will be an open call and uh, recommendations for the next exhibition. So from um, 14th, um, there will be details announced also on the on the website. So please take a look if you're interested. So thank you very much for joining us today.